My name is Aaron Thomas Green, and uh, when I was about six years old, uh, shortly before my sixth birthday, I was in some neighbor's backyard playing with some friends. You know, we were just, uh, there was maybe uh, five or six of us, including my brother, and we were, uh, you know, doing whatever kids do, just playing, having a good time. And uh, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but somehow I, I developed a difficulty breathing. No matter what I did, I couldn't take a breath. Um, I, I couldn't breathe normally and it was, uh, you know, becoming, becoming a problem. Um, so I started to walk towards home and I got maybe, uh, 20 feet away from my friends and, um, you know, I still couldn't breathe and I was, I was very upset and I, I didn't pass out, but my, my consciousness came out of my body. You know, I, me, whatever it is that I am, me, my soul, whatever, it left my body and I, I watched as my body fell to the ground. And, um, you know, I was just floating there above my body, looking at, at, at it just laying on the ground and I could look back and I, I saw my friends, um, they were still playing. They didn't know anything was, was really wrong with me. Um, and almost immediately I had a, uh, like, like my, my entire life replayed for me, you know, the, the, the entire six years of my life, they basically flashed in front of me um, in, a, in complete detail, like nothing was left out. And, um, you know, it, it seemed very brief. It, you know, it was six years. I was only about six years old. And um, one thing that really stood out was, you know, not only did I re-experience everything that I had been through, but also I could feel uh, what my parents had been through raising me, like like how I had acted, like I could feel that that impact to my parents and their life. And uh, a, a couple of things really stood out from that. One was, you know, my mother, she, she loved me. And, uh, you know, that, that love, I could, I could feel it in, in that life, life review. And, um, you know, it stood out that that was important, that she loved me. And then also, uh, you know, my, my father, he was a good father, but the, the frustration I caused him, you know, being a kid, you know, uh, crying and, and having dirty diapers and all this stuff, like I could feel his frustrations of uh, you know the the difficulties of having a baby, um, so that th those two really stood out. But um, you know, overall, it felt like I had done almost nothing. It, you know, it had been six years, but as a kid, I hadn't made any important decisions or uh, done anything significant. I guess so. It, it it felt like a really really short amount of time those six years. Um, but you know, after that life review was over, I, I was just back to, to floating there uh, next to my body. And I noticed a light way in the distance. Um, you know, it looked kind of like a star, but I knew that it wasn't a star. And um, I knew that there was something really important about that light, um, but I, I didn't know what. I, I, there was just something familiar about it. And um, I, I didn't go towards the light or anything like that, but I definitely noticed a light. And, uh, you know, I, I turned my attention elsewhere and I was just back to, uh, you know, floating there next to my body. And, uh, you know, I started just thinking, like, like trying to understand what was going on around me. And, and you know, floating there as a, as a, a soul without a body, um, you know, a couple of things really stood out. One was that, like, the, the flow of time was different than it is a, as a person. It just felt like uh, it, it wasn't the same. And then like, I was, I was more intelligent. I, I was uh, more comfortable. It was, it was a, a more pleasant form of existence, just, just kind of floating there. Um, but one of the first thoughts I had was, you know, what am I, you know, cause I was used to being a person and here now I'm just kind of floating around. I was like, you know, what's going on? What, what am I? And um, it was like, I could see myself. I, I was able to see myself as I just, as I floated there and I was kind of a, a round orb uh, of with a, fl a faint light coming from it, um, you know, just just like a, a round orb of, of energy, I guess. I, I don't know. Um, I didn't really understand exactly what it was, except it was kind of like a round ball uh, with with a faint light coming out of it. Um, and uh, then I, I I started to have questions, and as I would have questions, like the answers would would come to me. Um, and uh, for some of these, there would be like um, it would be like a memory, you know, I'd have a question and like a memory would come back to me, but this is like a spiritual memory. Um, so it was, it was more significant and, and more real than, uh, 
Um, but like, like when, you know, when we think of something that happened in the past, we remember it, but, but as a spirit, when the same thing kind of happened, uh, it would be in, in extreme detail and very clear. And it was, it was as if I was reliving the entire, uh, event. So anyway, one of the first questions I had was, um, you know, where did I come from? And, uh, this memory replayed and I, I had been, um, in a, in a, gr a group with other souls you know, as like a round orb. And there was, there was a couple hundred or a couple thousand of us together. And we were like in this bathed in light. I, I would kind of call it like a, a sea of light. Uh, we were all together. We were happy. Um, but we were also uh, ignorant and inexperienced. Like we, we were, it was like we were new. Um, and, you know, we, we just existed in this, in this happy uh, pool of light. Uh, and periodically um, some kind of gift or uh, present would come down to us and we were all very happy to receive one of these um, as a kid it kind of reminded me of, of getting a cookie um, anyway you know one time these gifts came down and there was one fewer gift than there were souls in this in this group and we all understood that and we all knew that and uh, i made the conscious decision you know all these other souls around me they're just like me and they all want this thing so i'm gonna i'm gonna pass on on this gift i'm gonna let everyone else have one and i'm, I'm not gonna take one and when the last soul received the the last gift i was very gently lifted up out of this pool and and like a higher level consciousness contacted me uh like mind to mind communication and uh essentially said you know what you did was was uh was very important you know to, to sacrifice what you want for those around you, uh, that's, that's very important. And it means that you're ready to, uh, you're ready for the next phase of your existence, kind of something like that. Um, and I was like, well, okay. Um, and this, this higher level entity that contacted me said it, it was my creator and that it, it had made me and that I was, I was important and that I was, I was loved and that there was a wonderful existence that, uh, that was prepared for me um and that uh you know in order to enjoy that existence i had to go through something like i wasn't ready yet to appreciate everything that was that was prepared for for me and for for all these other souls um so i i'll just call this my creator i'll, I'll call him god for uh uh you know that, that's kind of how i see it and god basically uh was extremely loving uh very gentle and, and kind with me, um, very powerful and extremely confident that this plan that God had worked out was, was a good plan. Like, um, it was clear that God had really thought through every detail, uh, every little part of this plan had been considered and, and thought about and that, uh, you know, it was necessary and, and, you know, it was a good plan. And anyway, um, essentially as, as I understood it, you know, God was loving, kind, compassionate, forgiving, and that in order for me to appreciate everything that God had in store for us, that I needed to, uh, of my own free will, become kind, compassionate, loving, forgiving. You know, I needed to um, grow myself to, um, to to also have those same traits that, that God had. Uh, like like uh, that, that was how I would be able to appreciate everything that that was in store for for us. I asked God, you know, couldn't you just change me and make me so that I could appreciate all this stuff? You know, why would why do I need to go through this this process that you, you've planned out? And God explained that that we were all created with free will, and that free will is extremely important, and that God's not going to uh, you know supersede or, or override or force us to do anything because uh, God respected our free will, and that uh, for God to change us rather than us change ourselves, it would be a violation of the, of the very reason why we were created in the first place. We were created uh, to be able to think for ourselves and make our own decisions. And that somehow that was, uh, that was very important. So anyway, uh, you know, God, God asked if I was willing to go through this, this difficult journey, but that, that would, um, you know, I would get, I would get all the difficult parts of my existence out of the way very quickly. And then I would be able to enjoy uh, my existence. And I, I agreed, I, I, you know, I guess it sounded like a, a good plan. I didn't know anything any different. 
Um, and God was very pleased that I agreed agreed to uh, to go through this. And uh, um, God asked, uh, you know, do you want to see my face? Uh, and I said, okay, sure. And so my attention shifted away. I, I had been looking at all these other souls that I had been with, and my attention was shifted away um, to a giant sun-like entity with uh, like billions and billions of, of souls all together um, in, in one group. And, um, uh, you know, it kind of looked like a giant sun, only there was billions and billions of, of different souls all in there together. And some of these souls would come to the surface and, and say hi to me, is basically. And so, you know, they were like me, except they had gone through this experience that I was about to go through. And these souls were all extremely, extremely happy, way, way happier than the, the souls I had been with. And they were knowledgeable and they were happy that I would be joining them eventually um, when I was ready. They told me that, you know, eventually when I was ready, I would I would come back and join them. And I, I, and I was like, OK, um, sure. Um, and then, you know, God asked me one more time, are you sure you're willing to go through this? And, you know, are you ready? And I said, yeah, uh, OK, I'm ready. And so when I agreed, it was like I was I was off. I was I was rushing a, away um, at, a, at a high speed. Like, I don't know where I was going, but I was flying at, at a very high speed. And um, I was but, but I still had the, like the communication with with God. And uh, we saw like thousands and thousands of different planets I could go to. And, um, you know, it was my choice. Like I was going to choose which of these, all these different planets to go to. And finally, you know, after seeing thousands and thousands of different planets, we saw Earth and there was something about this place. There's something about Earth and this life and, and the way things work here that I really like. It really, somehow it just fit me perfectly. And, and so, you know, I decided, you know, this is where I want to go. And, you know, with any decision I ever made, it was always like one time they would ask or God would ask, um, are you sure? And, you know, when I said, yes, I'm sure, then the decision was made and it was final. And so, you know, I was asked if I was sure. And I said, yes, I'm, I'm sure this is where I want to go. And then that decision was made. Um, and with that, that memory ended. And it's like I was back to, uh, you know, floating there next to my body. And, uh, you know, it only took a fraction of a second for this entire detailed memory to 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 play to, to you know, replay for me. Um, and I was back to floating there and I had another uh, another question. I, I thought, you know, OK, well, how did I become Aaron? Why? Why am I this person? And the same thing happened again, where this detailed memory replayed for me. And um, I was with some guides who had previously lived on Earth and they were um, they were helping me you know, figure out what kind of person I was going to become. And they showed me one person that I could become. And uh, th this person was very angry. Like I would have become a very angry person. I think there was something about uh, this this person's uh, family or, or childhood. Um, something wasn't quite right. And and basically they, their entire life, they would be very angry. And that's, that's how I would be if I uh, agreed to that life. And I said, basically, no. I'm, I'm not going to live that life. I, I, I didn't agree to it. And the guides were like, all right, OK. Um, and they then we went to like a nearby family and uh, there was a, uh, a mom and a dad and a, and a little child. And basically I could become one of their their child. I could become their second child. And um, I thought, OK, maybe this will work. And after seeing this this angry person that I could have become, I was kind of concerned that that maybe I would hurt other people and I didn't want to hurt anybody that was extremely important that I you know not not hurt anybody and so I wanted to be a, a female I wanted to be a girl because I felt like they were less likely to hurt others and um, these parents they had the uh, you know the genes like I could have been a redheaded girl and I, I really liked that I really wanted to be a redheaded girl I thought that was great I really I really liked it that um, you know red hair is kind of rare and there's not very many of redhead redheaded people in the world and so i really thought that was great and that's what i wanted to be um but there was something about uh the options available to these parents and and my personality and somehow it, it didn't work right and if i had i, I could have chosen to be a redheaded girl but like i would have been socially awkward i never would have gotten married i never would have had children 
And like, that was a, like a deal breaker for me. That wasn't what I wanted. So instead I, I started looking at what will, you know, what about redheaded boys that, that these parents can have? And there was like even fewer options and, and there just weren't enough options. It, it wasn't, I, I couldn't get the kind of life I wanted uh, from those options. So I said, okay, well, what about, you know, what about brown haired boys? And so my, th these parents had lots and lots of uh, options available from the, the genes that they have for, for brown haired boys. And so we started looking at those and they, those started to look like they, they might work like, like the options available there might be a good fit for me. Um, and so one of the first things I thought was, okay, I want to be like the best looking guy on the planet, you know, extremely good looking, a great looking guy. And the, these parents had those genes. It was, it was a possibility. Um, but my guides kind of showed me, look, if, you know, if you become a really good looking guy, you're going to have certain options available to you. And, uh, essentially, you know, women are going to treat you differently. And, and I, basically I would have been too promiscuous. Okay. I would have, uh, I would have been with too many women and, uh, I, I saw instinctively or, or it was self-evident that, uh, there were spiritual downsides to being too promiscuous. Um, you know, it's not, it's not the best way to be. And so, you know, I, I back, I reduced the, uh, the attractiveness down to like a, a closer to average looking person, you know, someone maybe a little bit good looking, but nothing, you know, nothing, uh, remarkable. Um, and then, you know, I started looking at intelligence and I wanted to be like the smartest guy on the planet, you know, like just brilliant. And I was shown that, you know, those options were available to me. Like my parents had that, that kind of genes available, but I would be, uh, I would be arrogant. I would look down on other people for not being as smart as me. I would be a little, a little bit of a jerk, you know, and, uh, um, and I would have been an atheist and all those were, were a deal breaker for me. And so likewise, you know, I, I backed the intelligence down to like a, you know, intelligence person, but, but, you know, nothing remarkable, just like a, you know, a little bit smart. And, um, you know, we, I, it's safe to say I was able to see, you know, what kind of body this person would have down to the most intimate detail, like the height, the eye color, everything about this body. I understood, you know, what it was going to be. And, um, you know, finally I, I found what I thought would be a, a, a good body. And my guides, my guides pointed out that, you know, what I had chosen, there was a, like a, a consequence, uh, you know, I, I, I finished, you know, picking my body and then, uh, you know, some more stuff happened. And then, uh, basically my experience was, was hidden from me when I was six years old and I didn't, I didn't like remember it or get that experience back until I was 35, you know, but between the time I was six and 35, I didn't know about this experience. And then, um, I read a, a newspaper paper article about, uh, someone else who had a near death experience and that like triggered me to have a, a recall of, of everything I had experienced. And, um, you know, the, then as an adult at 35, I was able to understand all this stuff that I had seen as a kid. Um, it was like I was able to, uh, you know, process it and understand what I had seen. So at, at that point, I, uh, I was able to, you know, understand it all. You know, souls get to pick their body. They, uh, they're able to choose, uh, you know, what kind of person they're going to be. And, uh, you know, it kind of, it, it kind of fits that, you know, God's not going to force a soul to go to, to one person or another, but, you know, people get their or souls get to kind of pick and choose uh, what kind of person they'll be, you know, what the, the physical traits they're going to have as a, as a person. And, you know, remember when I was choosing all this stuff, I wasn't a six year old. I was, I was a, a soul uh, before I ever came to, to earth. Uh, it was just that I, I remembered this as a six year old during my near death experience. But when I, when I'd actually chosen it, um, you know, I'd been a, a soul. And, uh, you know, I, I was more intelligent, more, uh, more aware, um, than I was as a six year old when I was a soul, you know, what I saw was it, it's extremely important how we treat each other. You know, we need to be kind, compassionate, forgiving, loving, uh, honest, you know, all these good positive traits, like, like to really get what God has in store for us, we have to freely choose to be loving towards others, you know, and, and when I say loving, I mean everything like compassionate, kind, giving, uh, you know, all of that stuff. We need to, to practice treating other people like that 
in order for us to get everything we, we can out of, uh, you know, what, what God has in store for us.